Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you what happens to the Pearson correlation coefficient symbolized with R when we take a linear transformation of a variable. So let's say we have, we start out with this variable x, okay? And these are the var values it takes. We have about, I think, eight or, or maybe nine observations, okay? Now, what I'm interested in, what, what happens when I create a new variable, let's call it y, and I multiply my x variable that I have right here by some constant a, okay, and I add it to some constant b. This is a linear transformation. Okay? So what hap what we're interested in it is what happens to the value of the correlation coefficient r when we do this to it. When we do this to x, okay? So I've set up a bunch of different scenarios and I'm using the coral function in Excel so equals coral and I'll recalculate these okay x comma y that's how I'm calculating my correlation coefficient I also have a video that shows you how to manually get the correlation coefficient at least using Excel so you can see how how Excel gets these numbers Okay, but let's proceed. So, as I said, these are the linear transformations that we're going to play with because I think they pretty much hit the highlights, okay? So, and here, under each row, I've calculated the correlation coefficient between x and the current y that we're in, okay? So, this r equals 1 is the correlation coefficient between x and this y. y equals x divided by 2. Okay, but let's look at this y a little closer. I built this y by doing, by taking each value of x and multiplying it by 1 half or dividing it by 2, right, and adding 0. So my a is equal to 1 half here and my b is equal to 0. Okay, what happens to the correlation? What is the correlation between x and this y? Well, it's exactly equal to 1. Okay, and that's what the theory tells you. It tells you that any linear transformation uh, be, uh, of, of a numerical variable has a correlation of either 1 or negative 1. So what I want to expound, expand on here is to first of all prove that and also show you when it becomes negative 1 and when it becomes positive 1. Okay? So interesting. These two variables are perfectly linearly co correlated or associated or related, however you like to say it. Okay? So let's move to the next column. And so I purposely chose the same transformation except I made it negative x over 2. So here in this column y equals negative 1 half times x. And this is still our x. This is always going to be our x plus 0. Right? Plus nothing basically. Here a is negative 1 half and b is 0 and the correlation coefficient becomes negative 1 so it seems that the correlation coefficient changes with the sign of the slope or if you like to prefer if you prefer to think of it as just the sign of the value the constant that you're multiplying x by okay so here we multiplied by negative 1 half here we multiplied, if you remember, by positive one half. Here r was positive one. Here r is negative one. So it shares the sign of 
the number you're multiplying x by. Okay. In this case, dividing. But dividing is the same as multiplying by a fraction. right? So let's move on to column D. Here I have y equals 2x plus 500. A is positive 2. B is 500. Positive 500, right? So R is 1. Seems that no matter what the sign of the number we're multiplying x by determines the sign of the correlation coefficient. And again, it's 1. It's a perfect relationship. All these have a perfect relationship. We'll talk, we're talking about taking linear transformations of x. So we should always get either r, r equals 1 or r equals negative 1. Okay? And let me remind you again, I'm calculating the correlation coefficient very quickly using the choral function. You highlight the x values, you highlight the y values you're interested in, and then it gives you the correlation coefficient. Okay. Next, I did y, uh, column E, equals negative 2x plus 500. And I was interested to see what happens here. Well, a is negative 2, b is 500 again. So we would expect the correlation coefficient to be perfect and in the negative direction. Sorry, because a is negative 2, right? And it is. Okay, moving on to column F. I wanted to see what happens if I have a positive slope, or a, and a negative intercept, or b. a is positive 2 and b is negative 500. I wanted to see if there was uh, any impact on r here. And once again, we see that it was positive 1. So it's connected to the slope or to the a. Okay, this is a 2. So positive a, positive correlation coefficient. And finally, I did the reverse of that. So for column g, y equals negative 2x. We have a negative slope and a negative intercept. So a equals negative 2, b equals negative 500. And we see that we get a r of negative 1. Okay? And that's because, again, the this is supposed to be a 2. Er, that's because, again, the direction of the relationship is determined by the A component in the linear transformation. Okay, So what we looked at here today is, first of all, we proved that taking a linear transformation of a variable, a numerical variable, will get you a correlation coefficient of 1 or negative 1. And to determine when it's going to be positive 1 and when it's going to be negative 1 if it's a linear transformation. That is, it comes in the form of y equals ax plus b. If a is negative positive, then r will be 1. If a is negative, then r will be negative 1. This only works for linear transformations. So we couldn't do something like y equals x squared here, or x to the third, or, or square root of x, or e to the x, anything like that. That would not be a linear transformation. All these were examples of linear transformations. And we saw that we do indeed get an absolute value of 1. And, the, and that the sign or the direction of the relationship of R is determined by the sign of the slope, or if you like to just call it A. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, please check out my other videos on my channel. I have tons of statistics, Excel, PowerPoint, R, and uh, other videos actually on correlation. Okay, so till next time, thanks for watching, subscribe, and have a great day.